information there. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight some of this. I mean, hide some of this. I'm going to highlight from uh, this row down to this row and right click and hide. And so that we could see this data, because now we're going to do a similar thing, but we're going to be concentrated on this number. So we're concentrated on this number, and that's going to be the direct labor variance. So same idea, and now we're going to apply it to the direct labor variance. So we're going to do the same calculations here. We're going to calculate this same number and this same number, and uh, we're going to pull that over here. So we've got the actual hours on this side. Actual hours equals the actual hours over here. And then we've got the actual rate. Actual rate is the same actual rate over here. And then if, if we were to multiply those two out, we've got the actual hours times the actual rate. We get the same number that we have here. So we've calculated that. We're going to do the same thing for the standard. So we've got the uh, over here standard hours. Standard hours are the 270. And then we have the standard rate. Standard rate is the 14. If we were to multiply those out, then we have the standard hours times the standard rate and we come up to the same number here so those are those are our, our check numbers here and if we took the actual over here minus the standard over there we would come up with the same number same number here and now we're going to break these out to the to the next piece of the calculation we're going to have we're going to first focus on these four items here so these four items uh, these two we already calculated actual hours times the standard rate and note that the thing that's going to differ between these two actual hours actual rate uh, actual hours standard rate the thing the difference is, is is the rate right so the actual hours are going to be the same we're still using the actual hours here of the 265 but we're using the standard rate now standard rate being the 14 because we're focusing on the change due to the rate difference being this 1375 what we what actually happened versus the standard 14 here so we're going to say all right so this is the uh, actual hours times the standard rate and note that if what we would want to happen if we look at the thing that's different the standard rate the actual rate we would hope that the actual rate is actually lower than we budgeted it to be which it actually is so if we take this number minus this number uh, we have the difference which which is actually going to be a favorable difference in this case because uh, the, the rate that we budgeted is actually higher than what actually happens. Now let's look at the other side. So I'm going to unhighlight these and we're basically looking at these four items here. So we're looking, whoop, I did that again, I did it again. We're going to look at these four items and we're going to have the actual hours times the standard rate and then the standard hours times the standard rate. The thing that differs here, the, the, uh, the thing that differs here would be the actual hours versus the standard hours so that's the thing we're focusing in on so if we were then to uh, look at the thing that is different the standard hours versus the actual hours we would hope that the actual hours are less and they happen to actually be less here so we're going to say all right this is going to be this difference minus this di and we get the seventy thousand, and that's a favorable difference so we're going to say all right so here's this plus this and we have a total favorable difference that adds up to that same number here. We've, re we've recalculated this number. Now, if we're just going to pull this over here, the direct labor uh, rate variance, the rate variance is this one. It's favorable. Uh, the direct labor efficiency variance is going to be this one. It is also favorable. And then the total equals the sum of these. And that is favorable. So those are favorable differences. And next piece we're going to look at is the overhead. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this again. I'm going to hide from here down to, let's say here, right click and hide. And let's actually hide a few more of these. Hide these down to there, right click and hide. So now we're going to take a look at the overhead controllable variance. So we have the actual overhead that we are going to compare to the budgeted overhead. So we're going to say the actual equals the actual numbers that were given over here, actual costs incurred in terms of fixed overhead and variable. We're going to have to add these two up. So it's going to be this item plus that item and enter. We're going to compare that to the budgeted overhead. So the budgeted overhead equals, we're going to go up to the budget at the 90% capacity because that's what actually happened is that uh, 2 million four plus the 2 million 160. And if we compare those two and I say that the actual is this minus the budget is that, then uh, the actual is great is less than the budget. So that's actually favorable. 
And then we're going to we're going to pull out the uh, fixed overhead volume variance because remember the fixed area is kind of the where where we applied kind of a variable allocation based on on units. So the budgeted fixed overhead is going to equal the budgeted fixed overhead here. This is the flexible budget. It's going to be this uh, two million four. And if we look at uh, the fixed overhead costs applied, we're going to say that this equals the application was based on the labor and the actual labor was this uh, 270,000 times. And if we look at the fixed overhead rate, we had uh, the $10 here. So we got the cost at the $10. And so there's our difference. And if we then subtract these out, the 2 million four minus the 2 million seven, we have the difference. It's also favorable. And if we add these two differences up, then we have the 10 plus the 300,000. And that gives us our total uh, difference of the 310, the total difference here. So now we've basically broken out these three total differences out into their components. And uh, that's the idea of uh, these types of calculations.